Hi scientists! Today we're going to talk about populations, how they're distributed, and what limits their growth. The big idea for this lesson is that the size of a population depends on the resources in the area and the reproduction of that population. So first, a population is a group of organisms. They're all the same species and they live in a specific area, so a specific ecosystem. Scientists generally think about populations as being distributed or spread out in one of three ways. So we'll run through those quick. First is a random distribution. And we usually find this when the individuals in a population don't interact strongly. Lots of times this is plants. So it could be trees in a forest or dandelions growing in a field. Um, there's no pattern to how they're spread out. It's just random. Second, the members of a population could have a uniform distribution. So this is when they're evenly spread out. And lots of times we find this when individuals compete for a scarce resource. So an example of this is penguins. Their resources land. Penguins tend to be very territorial. So they'll spread out um, over a, an area of land to, to, so each penguin can defend or be territorial over their own section of land. Um, and then the next penguin is territorial over their section of land. Um, and so you can imagine, right, a circle around each of the dots in the picture below um, representing the, the territory um, or the area where the penguin defends his land. Finally, we have a clumped distribution. And we see clumped distributions when the resources are unevenly distributed in an environment. So the um, organisms will tend to be where that resource is. Um, so in a clump near where there's more of the resource. An example of this is a bald eagle nest. So the um, chicks, right, or the baby bald eagles are all in the nest um, where the mom can take care of them, right? So the resource is mom um, and dad, I guess, um, protecting the nest and feeding the nest. Um, and so they all need to be in one area to receive that protection and food. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the general stages that we see when a population first establishes itself in an area and starts to grow. So we'll look at this graph here and I have time on my x-axis and then the size of a population on my y-axis. And we're gonna go through three stages here. So the first is exponential growth. Um, when a population first moves into an area, there's lots of resources, right? Lots of food, lots of space. Um, and so based on those resources, the population can reproduce a lot. Um, and so the number of organisms increases usually exponentially. Over time, we see that the resources start to get used up, right? The fast growing population starts to eat all the food, right? Or take up all the space. Um, and this means that there's less reproduction um, because some of the organisms might be less healthy because they don't have as much food or as much space. So growth slows down. We see a slight increase in the number of organisms still, um, but not that steady, steep curve that we saw in the beginning. And finally, growth stops. We reach sort of a maximum number of organisms. And we see the size of the population levels out. So it'll stay the same over the next several generations. And this sort of maximum um, capacity, right, or maximum number that a, a population that an area can support is what we call the carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that an environment can support. And it's dependent on the resources in the environment. So again, the easiest one to think about is food, right? There's only so much, um, let's say, grass growing to support a population of deer to eat. Um, and once there's too many deer for the amount of grass there is, right, some of the deer will start to die off um, and will reach sort of this maximum number and stay there. So you can see that we usually represent this on our population size graphs with this horizontal line um, and where it intersects the x-axis that's the carrying capacity right that maximum population size um, and you can see that it's sort of like a tangent line to the top of our growth curve.
We'll explore this more and look at more examples in class, um, but that will get you started. If you have any questions, please stop into office hours or leave them in the comments below.